everyone, my name is Elizabeth and I just want to start off by thanking Michelle, the other presenters, all the staff, the organizers, the volunteers for convening this conversation, for bringing us together to uplift black indigenous people of color who are producing food and changing the food system. I'm so, so thankful to be a part of this conversation. So my name's Elizabeth and I'm a worker owner at Long Hearing Farm. Uh, the farm is named after my grandma's grandma. Her name translated from Blackfeet into English is Long Hearing Woman. She survived one of the most difficult times in the attempted, in the history of indigenous people, the height of attempted genocide in the, um, in what is now the United States Plains. So she survived the Baker's Massacre, which was a um, slaughter of elders and young people, the largest massacre carried out by the uh, United States military in Montana's history. So she was not only a survivor, she was also the most joyful, beautiful human being that my grandma, who described her to me, um, had ever met. That she was so sweet that her nickname was Peaches. So we are trying to embody her values at the farm, especially the values of joyful resilience. Um, she was also a self-taught farmer and rancher, and she only spoke Blackfeet, so she was a pretty big badass in general. Um, we also really like the, the language of long hearing, long hearing being like present to the relationship that we're building with this piece of land, the project that we're engaging in together with our plants, with the soil ecology, with our more than human neighbors, um, at the farm, and... We also like the sense of like long hearing into the past to be in right relationship with our ancestors who are always with us, who are guiding us, who are there to give us strength. And then long hearing into the future as a time travel tool to, as Winona LaDuke Duke says, if you're only thinking about what you're going to do in your lifetime, not what, how you're going to create conditions for change for two generations, three generations deep, then you're not thinking in a long enough framework of time. So we really like that framework of like long hearing, deep listening. We look to the mountain and we think like, okay, like would the mountain approve of what we're doing down here? Like are we really, is our sense of time deep enough? Um, so that's a framework that we use. And I'll just say that it's a really beautiful transformative time to be involved in the indigenous food movement. It feels like there's so much going on and and young indigenous folks are in right relationship to their elders and we're really coming to, into our own and saying, look, we're losing some of these plants, we're losing some of these traditions how can we be in right relationship with like traditional ecological knowledge and practices and protocol and be really looking out